growing up, I was a perfect kid. The best student in the class, ranked number one. And guess what? I did that all on my own. No parent supervision, no one to help me or guide me along the way. There was no need for a stern talking to or a firm pat on the butt because I was amazing at everything and didn't need anyone or any help. And I even graduated high school as a class valedictorian. Who here can relate to that? Raise your hands. <laughs> I knew it. Well, that was not me. I was not that child. I was this child. <laughs> where my parents had to bribe me with lemonade in order for me to do my homework. I've been teaching for eight going on nine years now, and I've seen students on both ends of the spectrum, from where they excel and soak into learning really well, to where they struggle and can barely grasp the concept. But in all cases, they needed help. Maybe some more than others, but the point is that they needed help. Well, I am a teacher because that is what I'm all about. My goal as an educator is to be the person that I needed when I was younger. During the school year, I'm surrounded by students throughout the day, five days a week. What I've realized is that these students need us and they need our guidance. They may not realize it or they may not want it, but in reality, they do need us. Let me clarify. It's not so much that they can't do it on their own or that they don't have the ability to succeed without us, but it's about giving them the guidance, support, and better yet, inspiration. Our youth are already dealing with a gargantuan amount of pressure in their lives, and they're juggling a myriad of responsibilities. And sometimes we adults can downplay that and say, well, I did it when I was your age, so why can't you? But we forget that we had someone to help and to guide us too. For me, I had my parents and my older sister who were more than enough to be the mentors in my life. And of course, I had a few teachers to help me out as well. So now it's our turn and we're here as mentors to guide, to help and support because we can help alleviate those burdens and because we want our students, our youth, our children to go further than we ever did and in order for them to do that, they need us. The dictionary definition of a mentor is an experienced and trusted advisor, or someone who has the ability to advise or train. When we're talking about mentoring our youth or being in charge of another human being, the idea of it is a bit daunting. For some of us, if we're completely honest, we're still trying to find ourselves and figure things out as adults, so the thought of guiding another person can seem like it wouldn't be a good idea. But here's the thing. You don't need to be a teacher or to be around students all day to be a mentor. You don't need a high paying job or a college degree to be a mentor. What you need is the willingness to help and the belief that our youth are worth it that they're worth the investment of your time and effort, and that you believe that they can achieve. Having someone believe in you can make a world of a difference, and you can be that person for them. So as I mentioned before, the idea of mentoring youth can be a bit intimidating to some, but it doesn't have to be. Because if you really think about it, all you need to do is three things. Embolden, empower, and encourage. These three words, this formula of ease, are the only thing that you need to do to be a mentor. Now, if you look in the dictionary or thesaurus, these words are synonymous to each other and may seem redundant and completely unnecessary to have three words of the same meaning. However, hear me out. First, embolden. If you want to be a mentor, you need to be that person who emboldens our youth embolden as in arming them with the skills that are vital to college and career settings. When it comes to education, there's so much emphasis on learning what's in a book or scoring high on the never-ending standardized tests that they give us every single year. But true learning, authentic learning, 
extends far beyond that. And you can be that person who illuminates those findings of true learning. You can be that person to show them that skills such as communicating effectively, working collaboratively, and making commitments are fundamental in succeeding in any setting, whether that be at a university or at their first job. An example of emboldening our youth is a community service project that I recently started, Fini Finau, which is a Samoan term for being steadfast or resilient. While the project focuses on protecting the environment, one of the things the students get to do is grant writing. For me, I personally did not write or win a grant until two to three years ago. And yet these students, these teenagers, are not only learning how to write grants, but they're winning them as well. Now, they may be small amounts of a couple hundred dollars, but this skill can be transferred to many settings and is applied to both college and career opportunities. Some of you sitting here have probably won grants of a couple hundred dollars, a couple hundred thousand of dollars, and you can be that person who helps them improve these skills. But this is just one of the many skills that we can pass on. We're considered experts in our field, so let's train our youth to be experts as well. And you can be that person who shows our youth this authentic learning, these authentic skills, so when they do transition into adulthood, they are fully equipped, they are fully emboldened to succeed. Second, empower. If you want to be a mentor, you need to be that person who empowers our youth. Over the years, I've been to a number of programs, meetings, and workshops, and they always mention youth empowerment. Well, what does that mean? Again, let's look at the dictionary. Empower means to enable, or to liberate, or to authorize. So when we're talking about youth empowerment, you need to be that person who enables, who liberates them, and who empowers them, and gives them authority. Empowerment means involving them in decision making, and providing them the opportunity to make their own choices, and to grow and to develop as individuals. So what exactly are we talking about? As I mentioned before, I started the Project Fina Final, and one of the objectives is to empower our people, specifically our youth. So instead of running the project by myself, I have a board of students who are in charge of the calendar of events, the writing of small grants, organizing cleanups. They're given the authority to recruit volunteers, to collect and report data, and to make an active role in their community. This group of students will be telling me what they want to do and how they're going to do it. In addition, not only are they empowered within their small communities, but we take it a step further. And they go on to represent the territory at national programs. Now again, I help them find these opportunities and guide them through the directions. But it's them. It's these students who are excelling in the application process who are presenting and developing projects at these national programs, programs that are highly exclusive and don't see a lot of Pacific Islander representation. And yet here they are. And that's what I mean when I'm referring to youth empowerment. You can be that person who finds these opportunities or provides these opportunities for our youth. You can be that person who connects them to programs they might be interested in or you think would be a good fit for them. So be that person who really does empower our youth. And lastly, encourage. If you want to be a mentor, you need to be that person who encourages our youth. What I've noticed about being around students is that there is an inherent fear instilled within us. As an adult, not yet 30, I still feel this feeling. So I can only imagine how that feeling weighs upon our youth. So we need to get out of the mindset that failing is a bad thing or that you shouldn't ever fail. No, what we need to emphasize is that when they do fail or fall short, fail forward. With life comes the expectancy of failure and you can try your absolute best and still not make it. That's why we need to encourage our youth and make it known 
that failure is not the end. It's merely a comma in their journey and not a period. I am a proud aunt. My niece, Marielle, has our whole family wrapped around her little finger. She turns two this month, so she's still a bit wobbly on her feet, and she tends to stumble and often falls. When she does stumble, we all converge and try to steady her, and when she does fall, we pick her up right away and check to see if she's okay. When she learns something new, she looks up at us and we all praise her and tell her how amazing she is and you can see the happiness in her eyes from hearing those praises. Watching her makes me think, at what point do we stop this type of encouragement? At what point do we stop helping them up? At what point do you think that they don't need us anymore? For our youth, you can be that person to steady them when they stumble, to help them up and encourage them when they fall. You can be that person to check in on them to see if they're okay. You can be that person to praise them and lift them up when they do something right. Let's be that mentor who shows our youth that they can persevere in the face of adversity and that they can be resilient and recover when they do stumble. We don't want our youth thinking that they have to be perfect. Let me say that louder for the people in the back. We don't want perfection, we want progression. Be that person who emphasizes progress, even if it's minute, is still progress. Overall, mentoring our youth isn't about whether or not they get good grades. It's not about making sure that they're the best in the class or ranked in the top 10. It's about helping them become the best versions of themselves, whatever or whoever that may be. It's about giving them the skills and providing them the opportunities to grow and to develop as individuals. To reiterate, our youth are worth the investment of your time and effort. It's a cliche for a reason, but they are our future. So let's get into the mindset and recognize how valuable our youth really are. So the goal of mentoring is to be that person, be that trusted advisor, be that person who supports them, be that person who pushes them, be that person who inspires them, but most of all, be that person who emboldens, empowers, and encourages our youth. Thank you.